The opinions expressed in the video you're about to watch are solely those of BoatTest.com and its test captain. Hi, Christopher Hughes for BoatTest.com. With the increased popularity of jet boats, we're receiving more and more emails from boaters asking us what exactly is direct drive? What are jet pump units? Well, today we got something a little special for you. We're inside the Yamaha facility and we're going to take a detailed look at how all of this works. The technology of jet drive boats and PWCs has continued to evolve over the years with regard to performance, handling, and safety. Yamaha has been taking what it learns from its racing teams and applying it to its recreational models. We'll begin with an exploded view on a personal watercraft, a Yamaha Wave Runner. The engine will be located here, and the first action is the water being sucked in, and this is our intake brake. From here, it goes through this main assembly, and then we're getting down to the drive shaft. Now, this drive shaft is coming directly out of the engine. That's why it's called a direct drive system. The impeller, this one happens to be three blade, stainless steel, has more of a scimitar shape. That's enclosed in this housing right here. And what this essentially does is draw water in and then force it out. And just like with a jet engine, you can see that in this section here, it's conical. So it's taking that opening we have, which is roughly 160 millimeters, and shrinking it down. That has the effect of increasing the force of the water and the thrust, which is then sent out through the jet pump nozzle. And this end we're all familiar with because you see it at the back of a wave runner. Now, our directional control is primarily provided by the nozzle itself, but when we need to reverse, that's where the reverse bucket comes into play. And what's happening is the water is being forced out, and then the geometry inside the reverse bucket is what's taking that water and shooting it back in the other direction. Let's go through each of these components in greater detail. The jet pump's water inlet is located at the bottom of the hull. PWCs have one pump located in the center line, while twin application boats have their intakes located equidistant from center on either side. Water is drawn through the intake grate and intake port. The specially designed shape of the intake port funnels the water into the housing to feed the impeller. Turning the three blade stainless steel impeller is a drive shaft mated to the engine through this vibration reducing coupler. This end of the unit has a flange that nests inside it. The coupling shaft is held at the other end by this large bearing housing bolted directly to the transom plate. Note how this bearing features a grease fitting for easy maintenance. The drive shaft is splined into the coupler shaft and rotates the fixed impeller within this impeller housing. The all metal housing is made from an aircraft grade aluminum alloy for durability and longevity of the pump's critical dimensions. Because the impeller and its housing work in unison, the tolerances between the two parts are critical to the output performance of the pump. Let's take a look at what can happen with an impeller housing not made of metal. Because of the tremendous forces involved, strength is paramount. As you can see here, these forces are very destructive. If debris such as a rock or other hard object is ingested, it can have catastrophic results and literally blow the unit apart. That means a tow back to the dock and an expensive repair bill. Also note the robust size and multiple mounting points of the Yamaha unit on the left compared to the unit on the right. As the water leaves the impeller, it is pushed through this duct housing which uses vanes to once again shape and control the water flow into the conical nozzle. This deflector nozzle is gimbaled. When it goes side to side, that's our steering control. Up and down is our trim control. So when you see the trim on a, a Yamaha Wave Runner, this is what it's moving. If it goes up, it raises the bow. If it points down, it lowers the bow angle when you're driving. Now that we've looked at the PWC side, let's transition over to the boat side. You'll notice, very, very similar. We have our intake grate, we have our main shaft, we have our transom mount, we go into our impeller housing, we go to our hub. Here's where the changes take place. This component is what sets up for the jet pump nozzle for a boat. Now they don't have reverse buckets. The way this is set up is they're using special geometry within the nozzle. There's almost two parts to this nozzle. And the way it works is, when this is in the up position, the water is free flow coming out the end, pushing the boat forward. When this is lowered, it has a neutral position and it also has a full reverse. And what it's doing is diverting that water back into a different direction to allow that boat to back up. 
Again, our steering is achieved just as it is with a PWC by the direction of the nozzle itself. This has another advantage. A setup like this in a boat doesn't extend past the bottom of the hull. And that's what makes jet boats popular with people who like to go into skinny water and not have to worry about depth as much. This also provides an optimal center of thrust, which helps reduce bow rise and increase time to plane. What really makes this configuration popular among family boaters is the safety factor of not having an exposed propeller at the swim platform. That's our look at how jet pump units work and their major components. Hopefully something to consider when you're researching your next purchase. For BoatTest.com, I'm Christopher Hughes.